Setting off to court on Friday morning, Kem Sokar knew that there would only be one verdict. The trial, which has dragged on for three years, had seen many delays, but very little real evidence. Nonetheless, it was clear with elections coming up, Cambodia's main opposition leader was unlikely to walk free. The multi-year process to silence Kem Sokar, based on a fabricated conspiracy, is a miscarriage of justice. A veteran of Cambodian politics, Kem Sokar's rise to the top started in 2012 when he joined forces with Sam Rainsy, the other main opposition politician. The party they formed, the Cambodian National Rescue Party, posed a serious threat to the ruling Cambodian People's Party in local and national politics until it was dissolved in 2017. At the time, many party members were jailed or fled the country, like the party's co-founder, Sam Rainsy. Hun Sen is very afraid of the opposition, especially he is afraid of the Cambodia National Rescue Party, which is uh, growing very popular. It is why he has to condemn the Kim so Hun Sen, now the world's longest serving prime minister, has effectively been in power since 1985. Now he's preparing to hand over control to his son, the Cambodian People's Party will contest a general election in July, but with Kem Sokar now permanently removed from the political landscape, there's very little opposition. Kem Sokar is an indicator of the death of democracy. What has happened to him shows that the, the democratic aspirations that were contained from uh, UNTAC on, on, you know, when the international community came together to sort of help reconstruct Cambodia, that democratic dream has been killed by Hun Sen. Kim Sokar's legal team say they will appeal, and there may be the opportunity to negotiate a reduction in sentence. But that's unlikely to happen until after the elections, and Hun Sen's confirmation of another four years in power. Tony Chang, Al Jazeera.